What's up, y'all? It's B Boy Strike in the house in Termini City podcast, and today we have our first ever B Boy guest, B Boy Kobe. How are you doing? Good. How are you, brother? Doing very well, man. Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about his history, how he got into B Boying, and uh, a little bit about his crew. So, yeah. Um, That's cool. So, my first question is. How were you introduced into breaking? Like, where are you from? How did you get into it? All right. So I'm from the island of Guam. Right. I was introduced to it probably late 2008, 2009, one of those years. I know it was the year after Super Crew won ABDC, if you want to go mm. back and check that out. But um, back then, Guam breaking scene was huge because mm. of ABDC, Super Crew, Jabberwockies, Quest Crew, and that really heavily influenced us. Um, but I started because my cousin started breaking before me mm. and then eventually they kind of just started asking me to do it with them and it just stuck. And 13 years later, I'm still here. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So uh, I think you mentioned uh, you were from Guam. So like how hard was it getting in these videos or like just finding inspiration just to even learn how to break in Guam? Yeah. Well, it, it was actually really hard, too, because as a kid, mm -hmm. I, growing up, I didn't have cable. So, like, all the shows I mentioned right. earlier with Super Crew, Jab Walkies, and ABDC, yeah. I didn't even watch them because I couldn't see them at oh, all. Really? So, the only thing I had was people showing me clips, mm -hmm. and eventually, um, it led me to trying to find tutorials on YouTube. So, I found, like, a lot of those um, mediocre tutorials from the 2010s. Right. I'm not going to say any names because I don't want to make anyone like, yeah. oh, man. But yeah, that's pretty much how it started. But um, after that, one day I was basically, I lived in an apartment complex mm -hmm. and we have this little grass patch where I mean, my friends would try to roll, a roll around and do windmills. So we'd like do that little kick windmill thing yeah, to yeah. Your, like your head and you fall down. Yeah. And then one day, for some reason, there was just a b-boy walking by throwing his trash and he was like, hey, do you guys want to see a, like real windmills? Yeah. And he showed us. And then from there, that was like my first exposure to a real b-boy in front wow. of me. Yeah. So do you uh, remember his name at all? Yeah, his name is Rue from Cause of Fire Crew. Oh, and right fine. now, it's crazy because he actually lives in in Texas. I don't know if he still breaks, but mm -hmm. I still keep in contact with him. And he's still a dope person and yeah. a big inspiration. Hey, sh shout out to him for sure because that's his first interaction for sure. All right, so, uh, so you mentioned Guam, but what's your connection with uh, Full Force Crew? Because uh, I know Guam... And full force. Full force is in Las Vegas yeah. in that area. So like how did how did it come into Guam or Yeah. So what's crazy is in twenty twenty, right? Like mm -hmm. a month before the pandemic hit and we all got locked down, mm -hmm. uh Super Crew came to Guam to do a performance. Mm. And I met Ronnie there. And one day um I basically helped him get like a hotel room because I used to work at a hotel. Mm -hmm. And he took me out to lunch to have just a, a thank you lunch to meet me. Our kids played, they were really young. But anyways, he kind of planted the idea in my head. He, he said, I remember saying, what do you want to do with breaking? And at that point, I was working a regular like nine to five job, wasn't breaking a lot at all. I was trying to support my family. I was a new right. father, you know, paying bills for the first time. And when he asked me that question, I just said, I don't know. And he told me to come to Las Vegas. So what I did literally is when COVID happened, mm -hmm. I w lost my job. So I had nothing to do except wait for the pandemic to end. Mm -hmm. So I trained every day for like two years, right. moved to Las Vegas and wow. met Ronnie again for the first time. And then after that, I just wow. started connecting with them. And eventually I got done with the crew um, like late last year. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's just blessings. I love them. Wow. Yeah. yeah are y'all hear, are hearing, hearing this right now? We took hella that's, risks. That's crazy. So many risks. And, like, and how old were you? Uh, when I met Ronnie or when, uh, I moved here? when you moved? When I moved here, that was last year. So I was 22, 22 or 23. Wow. One of those. Yeah, yeah that's, that's wild. Um, that's so I basically crazy. just like left everything behind. I brought my dogs, my wife and yeah. my kids and like five luggages to my yeah. name and just decided to move to dance because yeah. <laughs> this guy told me to. For sure. So uh, when you went to Las Vegas, of course, you had to find a job and uh if y'all know kobe he he's into the show business so how did y'all like how did you even find that route you know? um so the first year in vegas i actually worked for an internet provider uh, called cox i worked online 
Okay. And then one of the shows in Vegas had an opening um, and they need, needed someone to basically fill in some hours. Mm -hmm. So one of um, one really good friend, he's actually in full force as well. He offered me the job because he handles that. Mm -hmm. And from there, I started working in the show. And from there, like I literally was able, like he asked me, I remember it was in December. He asked me in December. He said, hey, we have an opening for this job. Do you want to do it? I was just like, okay. And right after I was like, mm -hmm. I like put myself on like a state in Cox because I used to answer phone calls, right? Because right. I got the phone call. I put myself on like a hold to not receive calls. And right when he told me that I hung up, I went to my boss and I said, hey, I quit. I put my two weeks wow. in and I quit my job. Wow. And then two weeks later, not even knowing, I didn't even know how much I would be getting paid, but I just knew I wanted to dance full time. So mm -hmm. I just took that risk. And since then I've been doing the show. Wow. Right. No, no regrets. No just regrets. Yeah. Everything just full, full force, man. Come full on. force. Yeah. Figuring it out. Yeah, <laughs> That's my sure, model. Just sure. figure it out. Yeah. Figuring it out. Um, I also got to ask, like going back into the dance, who was your major inspiration, especially while you were living in Guam? Like who were, who were you looking up to at that time? Oh yeah. So it kind of came in phases. Um, coming mm -hmm. up, I really didn't have like one set inspiration. I really liked um, Hong Ten style though. He's Hong someone Ten. that I really looked up to. Shout out Hong Ten. I really gravitated towards a lot of um, people who won like BC1. Yeah. Um, eventually from Hong Ten, I naturally stemmed down to like Seven Commandos. Oh. Like so like Wing, Skim, Ronnie, Dizzy, those right. guys. And then from there, I started getting more like influenced by like more traditional kind of breaking. So mm -hmm. like, Big ones for me like skill methods, yeah. squadron, like even flip side kings was a big one for me. Right. Um, I liked supernaturals, and then I mean that's about it. So it it was a pretty small, but um, with with the things that I had around me in Guam, that was that was big because I used to even like, for example, a battle was going on, like the battles we just casually go to. Right. I used to stay up to like three, four in the morning just to be able to watch those battles and then wow. study the footage from the battles and then see what I could take from it just so yeah. I can get better. So like, what was the main takeaway of, from watching it? Like, what, did you look at the concept of it or like, what, what did you take away in order to get better and better? Yeah, I pretty much just tried my best to um, try to do what people weren't doing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like you said, take concepts. So I really tried to look at, let's say, um, Menno is a good example of someone who inspired me a lot. Right. And I tried to look at what makes him tick, right? Why mm -hmm. did he win BC1 three times? Mm -hmm. So I used to be able to study these rounds, kind of break them down, see where they start or in the middle or in the end. Yeah. And kind of reconfigure that into my own kind of little like formula. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I just kind of tried taking advice from um, like B-Boy interviews. I remember yeah. watching uh, Smurf used to have these um, spin theory podcast yeah. episodes yeah. too, where he'd bring people that. on. Yeah. Those, those are my favorite episodes. And I shout remember out them. Spin shout out spin theory. For sure. I remember them saying like, um, just to be original and try to look as fresh as possible. Mm -hmm. So I took that and I really just tried to do that as much as possible. And then I For came sure. here and it looks like I was too original in a, in a way. Mm -hmm. So now I'm kind of backtracking, trying to become more foundational and rounded. Right. right. So it's still like a, a learning process, but I definitely think that I'm in the right direction. Yeah, for sure, man. Hey, you're doing a very good job. I loved having you here talking with us, man. I, I learned a lot. Uh, so this was a dope interview, man, for sure. Kobe, thank you for thank talking you, with brother. us. Appreciate yeah, you. For sure, man. Uh, and to the next episode, man. Right, peace.